located at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, September 10th. <clears throat> and I am calling the meeting of the Waitley Select Board to order. You can sit over here. here. First item on the agenda to switch seats. <laughs> Perfect. No. First item on the agenda to review, <clears throat> to review and vote to approve the meeting minutes from August 27th. Any comments or questions? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I do not. Move we approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. To review and discuss vendor payroll awards. Any questions on those? We don't have anything. Not Public comment. Residents may provide comments up to three minutes on items not on the agenda. I'm assuming you folks are here for something on the agenda, the poll hearing. But if you had anybody, any did you have comments about anything else? No. Okay. And it doesn't look like we have anybody on Zoom. Uh, appointments, 6.10 p.m. or 6.02 p.m. Uh, public hearing. Do we have just Eversource? Uh, yes, I believe he's on Zoom right now. Oh, oh okay. Yep. That's just Hello. Hi there. Hi there. I would hear a motion to open the hearing. Uh, would we uh, open the hearing to consider petitions submitted by NSTAR Electric doing business as Eversource for the installation of one utility pole on Conway Road to provide new service to Lombrico Farm? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> yes. Jesse, you want to go any, any questions? Any not from the board at the moment. Is there any comment or questions from? Uh, just do you know about when this is going to happen? Do you know what about when this might happen? When? Uh, yes. Is within the next few weeks if it passes tonight. Why don't we get a brief rundown on what they're proposing? Yeah. yeah. Jesse, do you mind just reiterating what the request is for the benefit of the public? Yeah, the request is to install one new pole um, so we can continue service up um, Conway Road uh, to give a new service to Lombrico Farm so for his uh, greenhouses. Uh, so it'll involve one pole and extending one overhead wire. Mm -hmm. And then um, do you all have the map? Yeah, from looking at the map, I think... Like there is an existing pole out there that's kind of right in front of Jesse yes, and and Jesse's house there. Detailed map, which doesn't give you any idea of actually where but, it is. Uh, see, but, uh, yeah, so that's why I wanted to put, it's right in front of, so kind of yeah. um, in front of Jesse's house, maybe a little bit towards the chapel. And it seems like, is that pole the one, um, the existing pole, that is like the end of the line for electricity on Conway Road? Correct. Yeah. 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 And then so what uh, it looks like there's one more or less an equal distance up the road, uh, like chapel is halfway between uh, the existing pole and the proposed pole, other side of the street, but roughly equal distance on the other side of the chapel. Correct. So you go, uh, so it'll go across the road there. So I'm just doing that. Yep. We got some members of the public who may not have the map in their hands. Sure. 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 Yep. No. Yep. That's accurate. The, and then the new pole will be the end of the line for electricity going up uh, Conway Road. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, Any more questions or comments? Yeah. Is anything going to be done to the pole in our front yard? Did you hear that? Is there anything going to yeah, be yeah. done to the existing pole? There, um, the ES six dash forty four, um, the one that your, um, the one that's in black on your map, the existing pole. Yep. Yeah, I map. spoke. With, I I was there one day. I spoke with the homeowners of that house, and I ex I uh, explained to them that there was going to be an additional anchor on the inside of that pole to help support it, and they they said they were okay with it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I just forgot what he had said that. <laughs> Okay. Sure, sure. I understand. Excellent. Uh, any further questions? Comments? 
All right. Um, I hear a motion to close the hearing. I move that we close the hearing uh, for the petition submitted by MSTAR. Electric doing business as separate source for the installation of one utility pole on Conway Road to provide new service to Lumberville Farms. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And do we hear a motion to approve this? I move we approve the petition submitted by NSTAR Electric for a utility pole on Conway Road as submitted. Uh, second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. All right, you got a poll. Awesome. I appreciate yeah. I appreciate you guys letting me call in. I'm off to open house. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you, Jason. Take care. Take Thank care. you. Have a good night. You too. Okay. And you can stay for the rest of the meeting. It's uh, going to be a home dinger. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The highlights. Well, although, although, although that was the highlight. The yeah. poll, yeah. Uh, that's the highlight. <laughs> some of us would say that's the highlight, but we are doing choice, something choice, about community okay. agreements. Uh, so there's something else high there, I think. Yeah. Next, next item on the agenda: review and vote. Although we will not be voting this time because we don't quite have all of the legal material together. Uh, but review host community agreements for number one: debilitating medical condition treatment centers. Number two. Green Jeans Farms LLC and number three, Toro Verde, Massachusetts. In Are we supposed to have representatives from any of them? No. no. Yeah, so uh, I'll give an update. Yeah. Um, so we've been working on, we're utilizing the model agreement from the CCC, um, and I've been working with these three entities um, with that. And we've also been working with town council who. Uh, provided some recommended changes to the model agreement that then required going back and forth with the attorneys for the three entities. And this afternoon, we finally came to an agreement on the amended language. Uh, so in your packets, you have three versions of the CCC model language. In the upper corner that says CCC, that's the ori original language. The one that is marked Waitley is the Waitley version of the agreement now, and the one after that with the red lines is showing what was changed in the model agreement to make it the Waitley version. Uh, the All three groups, all three applicants are in favor of the Waitley version with one comment. Mm -hmm. The one comment is specifically with uh, the request or the recommendation from David to add in a section 12 called indemnification or titled indemnification which is a standard clause that you typically put in any agreements. It is not one that was included in the model language. KP does ad advise us to include indemnification just as a standard operating procedure. Um, the applicants noted, though, that in some of the CCC reviews of these agreements, they have stricken indemnification clauses. Some of them they've allowed to go through. There's no rhyme or reason as to why the indemnification sometimes is approved and sometimes not. So the idea or the re recommendation here is that we move forward with the Waitley version of this agreement with indemnification in there. It's not in the one that's in front of them. It is in the it's clean in the version. Third one. I have this it. one. Yeah. And it's in it's in the clean one that says wait. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Yeah. Oh you're looking at the red line version. But, the red line version. Yeah. But it's in it, it's in the waiting version too. Yeah. Oh. But we would move forward with that. The three applicants are okay with that. We would they would still submit that agreement if the board does approve it. We can have it to the CCC. If the CCC does have a problem with that indemnification, that, that, that clause, <laughs> that clause, section 12, um, all they would do is similar to what's happened in the past, they would submit a letter of non-compliance saying these are the items that you need to fix in your agreement, um, which may include that, at which time I would come back to the board with those entities and say we need to do these corrections? Does is the board amenable to those corrections to the agreement? And if so, then we can move forward. But at present, uh, we can do that if the board wants to review these and send me any questions afterwards, or if the board wants to move forward with the Waitley version. And then what we can do at the next meeting, we can have all three entities come 
with their version, not their version, but with their details built in using our template because okay. I want us to use these templates going forward. Um, okay. This weekly version also does include in on page six, under general occurring fees, we did stipulate that it's the one area where the municipality does get to fill in their requirement for fee collections, but we're very restricted as to what we can collect. These fees basically say that you are, you, the uh, cannabis operation, are required to pay any customary and usual building permit or any other permit fees basically acknowledging what is required anyways, but we do include it in here and making sure that they are understand that any fees that they incur in acquiring those permits, yeah. they must pay that it is not on the municipality's time to go and do that. Thank you. Uh, the only, there is one other addition that we have included in the Waitley version. It's a section on page seven, section nine cooperation. Um, I had recommended including a section in here that provides for a cooperative element where it acknowledges an open relationship between the operation and the municipality, as well as acknowledging that the operation or the company will support any municipally sponsored educational programs related to cannabis use or abuse or underage usage. Um, we cannot require it. And it all, so it does say that they will make good faith efforts to do these things, um, but all three entities were in support of adding this on top of the standard language. And we don't believe that that will actually create any problem with the CCC because we're not requiring anything. We're just advocating for it. Well, I'm happy to take any questions. But yeah, the, if, you, if you need time yeah. to review, you're welcome to review, uh, send independently emails to me with any questions or feedback. Uh, if necessary, I can then at the next meeting provide a revised version and then, then the meeting after we can come back with the companies or we can do it at the same time, depending on if there is feedback or the scope of your feedback, but happy to take any additional. Well, I had, I had read this last week and there's a couple of changes since then yes. that um, I just caught up with this afternoon <laughs> after getting Because we're going back and forth. Uh, right, yeah. and that because the, the one arrived yesterday, one arrived yes. today. Um, and so at first I would look, but your your summary there uh, clarified um, the thing about the, I, why couldn't I find it in here? I, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but I, I thought, it, I mean, it's kind of a bland agreement yeah. in some ways. Um, and it's as strong as we're being allowed to make it by right. the state who, yeah. and whose yeah. wisdom is taken away. And Under current uh, regulations, because it could be, at least for this current agreement, maybe the regulations will change again. And then when the agreements have to go back through renewal, hopefully we can improve them if we can get additional teeth. Um, yeah. Obviously, this process is going on a very roller coaster type yeah. ride right now. We're kind of here. Um, and depending from the trend, has been to remove, keep removing the team. Right? Yeah, yeah, hopefully, yeah. it's here and not. One or two yeah. left, and they're yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're very optimistic about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Would anybody like yeah. to either? Uh, um, approve uh, this tonight or to say let's take it home and review it. I think we can take it home and review yeah. it. Yep. But the, the I think final language. Yeah. I think pending any um uh, like if you if you have some strong objections or some things you really want to chat with Pete yeah. about, um in the absence of that, would it be uh do you think it'd be okay to just have those agreements ready for the next meeting? Right. I, yeah. I would anticipate approving them at the next yeah, meeting. I think but, that would be a yeah, I think that's reasonable. Reasonable. we need to go over. Okay. Yeah. Great. I will be open to anything and I will also make sure the three applicants are aware to be prepared for the 24th. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Hey. Oh, business. Could we have a whole hearing? No, they, they missed the deadline. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, old business town clerk review and vote on request for police detail. As I understand it, there is something happening tomorrow that Amy wants to take part in. Yes. Prior to bringing this to us. One of the here. state agencies is meeting with various town clerks and city clerks in order to help provide guidance on how to secure and safeguard your polling locations for the upcoming yep. um, election. And so she wants to have that meeting tomorrow and oh, okay. come away with information from that to then Okay. Either support her request or revise her request. Okay. So okay, okay good. Yeah. Okay, so that's on. That's she on, also on is looking yeah. into. Um, apparently, there through the Western Mass uh, Homeland Security. I forget the agency, but there's funding in that in our Western Mass uh, Homeland Security uh, Ab uh, Advisory Committee. That has money that can be used for police details at polling. There may still be open funds. Mm -hmm. So Amy has put in a request to Burcock because Burcock is the fiduciary for that money to see if we can uh, secure some of that money because we don't currently have a budget for police detail for it. So it would help to pay for it. Yeah. Okay. So she's she is looking into that too. So we hopefully will know on that as well for the next meeting. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, next, assessing, discuss, and vote on the CAMA software upgrade order agreement, which was, I think, clarified, yep. Pete, at least since. Yeah. Yeah. So time when we were going, yeah, what? Yeah, we paid something already. Yeah. yeah, you've already paid 2700 So essentially, that 1500 is the remainder of what would have been 4200 so it's just, uh, and that's why you see the 2700 reflected in the next line item. So it's, it's not just, really the renewal fee. No, no, because it's the, well, it's the renewal fee that would pay for our classic version, but they're applying that classic renewal fee to the Canva software that would have been mm -hmm. 42. So it reduced it at least for year one to 1500. Okay. Um, yeah. I understand. Any other questions about the agreement? Will we approve yes. the Amazon software upgrade? Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, who's it? We are. New business, new hire, appointment of operator laborer in the highway department. If we have a recommendation. Yeah. I'm happy to do it. Go, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> what? Well, no, I, I wanted to give Fred the opportunity if he wanted to. No, it's, it's fine. No, we, uh, we, uh, um, Pete Northpart, when I interviewed five, four. we interviewed five or four and one did. We, we interviewed five. five. There was a six that had been that, invited. Unfortunately, they don't show. And of that group, we, Agreed unanimously that Scott Coombs, who has worked in Greenfield, resume was mm -hmm. yeah. uh, worked in Amherst and has all the necessary uh, licenses and permits to do the job. And we thought that Scott Coombs would be the best person to. Recommend. Therefore, I've done so. Yep. I, the candidate that you are looking for. And we had a 25 applications. It was a oh, huge pool. That's yeah. Refreshing. We actually got yeah. to interview a lot of people. Yeah. I, I was happy with the fact that we had so many to interview. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Good I'm sign that people want to work here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, he seems very confident. I, know, well, I, 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 I will move that the town appoints Scott Coombs to be the original operator of labor and highway department. I right. second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Next item digital equity plan discuss and vote on priorities from the adopted plan. Or at the very least, discuss. Yeah. yeah. Need a bunch of notes on the copy on my computer. Some of them are good. 
they send it into Sylvie and, and on her request to us <clears throat> to uh, to make some recommendations. But I'm not sure I, I've got it narrowed down to like here's my three top recommendations. Said a lot of Buckshot. <laughs> Unfortunately, Would Sylvie wasn't able to with us. Oh, well, if I can get in a Zoom meeting. <laughs> or just um, verbally. Well, verbally. I, I went straight to the recommendations pages. Yeah. Yep. Right. Um, and the, the first one for fast, reliable connectivity, um, like all of the goals kind of seem like they're good. Excellent. And sometimes in a vague way. Um, I, um, I was thinking on that particular page, I didn't really understand a mobile hotspot lending program. Like I go to the library and I check out a hotspot for my house. Like I do that, that, that didn't quite make sense. And I wasn't sure that that was something, uh, distributing the digital devices, our senior center is doing a lot of for the seniors, but it doesn't hit the younger folks. So it seemed like something the schools might be taking care of. So there were kind of questions there. The one thing where they had um, uh, potential funding sources, three of them, was a um, program to address dead zones and inconsistent connections. And so my comment was, can we use this grant to pay for Comcast to cable the remaining few houses that are not served at this time? If so, this might be a higher priority. But this also is something we could negotiate with the upcoming cable renewal negotiations. It'd be helpful to know the grant timelines compared to the renewal negotiation time. So the renewal negotiation is, I'd say, roughly the next two years. It could go really quickly. Um, but typically in those renewal negotiations, we say, well, we want you to run the cable up this many miles, this street, that, and so on. And then they we also negotiate for equipment money to keep, um, well, Put money that correct purchase the screens in front of you, the owl, the the stuff we did to upgrade this room. For one, it pays uh, for FCAT uh, and all the work that they do. Um, so it's you know if we ask them to do lots and lots and lots of cabling, then we kind of can get less and less and less on the equipment. So it's it's a negotiation. Um, I, it's I a back different you source. Just a second, you said potential funding sources. There were three funding sources. Did I misunderstand you? Yeah, there, yeah. It says NDI, the BEAD Challenge oh. Funding, and the GAP Network. Potential How do you funding have sources. That? I have Connect Humanity. Yeah. Um, I have Connect Humanity. Yeah. I only have one potential funding source. I like three. I okay. Then I've got a different document. This was the draft that went out with. Well, there was a draft. I see, I see MBI as a supporting partner, but not a good Yeah, I see MBI as a supporting partner and alliance mm. for digital equity. As the oh, okay. Then challenge funding. That seems great. I mean, this one looks, I mean, well, uh, this may be an earlier version. That, if, um, if those are indeed potential funding sources, though, that would be great. Yeah. Because I think to me that's one of the things in our town. We really have like nine upwards of ninety five percent coverage, but for the five percent that don't have right co connection to Comcast, it's harder. And to to me, the other big picture problem is we don't have any competition. I was helping a student who was living with her mom in an apartment in Northampton, and they said we need to get internet. So we go to the Comcast page together. And you know what they pay for the same thing I get at my house? Mm -hmm. They pay $39 a month. And you pay. More than 100. Mm -hmm. More than 100. Uh, there's no competition. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's a problem. And I don't know that any of these really address that. Okay. Um, is and, Verizon a potential provider? Well, we did support Verizon uh, with, they were trying to get a grant to, to do some of that. So Verizon is not a particularly strong competitor. They can't do high-speed internet at this time in the town. Um, so that's, I mean, so with that, 
you know, don't, that's my grumpy mindset mm -hmm. that I brought to this. I, I like I my mostly, grumpy mindset. I mostly looked at it in terms of can this help us at least get something high quality? And then the other, like they were talking about in here, there were various things that help people get a discount, but oh, those funds are gone and nobody else can switch the program. So it's kind of like, well, I don't think I'll make that a priority if there's no money left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that was my. Um, I, so maybe my comments on here are more complaints, um, but uh, I think though to that point about like some things like exploring more affordable options, but some of those things may not exist right now. It is noted that it's target implementation is long term because yeah. those funding opportunities will change in the future, so it could still be a priority. Mm -hmm. and, um, I was talking with Julie, when you are looking at priorities, you should be looking at setting priorities that have a mix of impl implementation targets so that you always are looking at like an end of a longer term thing, but also doing some of the low hanging fruit. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I, I, I think the part about addressing dead zones um, <clears throat> is probably a important just because not because half of the town is a dead zone but because <laughs> part that is a dead zone they, they don't need to be dead they can they can be alive right <laughs> I mean, uh, so, yeah. yeah but uh, unfortunately there, there are fewer funding sources than uh, from my original draft. so well we can follow up and find out yeah. which of these is correct uh, yeah this is coming from the final version which we have posted on yeah. the website right so, I mean, to me, yeah. I guess, part of my, I don't know, maybe it's my cynical self, but it's like, there's these recommendations. Like, somebody should explore and promote options for affordable quality data plants and more robust cell service. And it's like, duh. You know, and I thought that's what we hired you guys to do. And I guess mm -hmm. they did find a couple of potential funding sources that now... We like if we could find a replacement for so we could go out and look for it. So that's okay. The uh, no, sorry. I got two rants. <laughs> I had two rants there. You cut me off. You only get one rant per meeting. One rant per meeting. Joyce and Brian. Yeah. I I would also for a priority set uh, negotiate lower internet subscription rates. This is on goal two selection of service. Yeah. Yeah. In line with choices yeah. comment and rent number. Yeah, yeah. So it's a long and term stay. implementation. For yeah. goal one, fast reliable connectivity. I, I would agree with Mona yeah. support the B challenge challenge program and see if we can find out if there are more funding sources and distribute digital devices to covered populations because that is a short-term goal with a municipal digital equity implementation program yeah. as a funding source. Right. But I feel like for that, um, we should not be targeting seniors so much. They still have, they have more devices, they've got more room in that grant to get more devices. Um, maybe the seniors, the covered population, the seniors are the covered population in the one they've got. And I think it actually came under um, an MBI implementation grant was, I think what that was. So, um, so this made me think we should, I don't know what the schools are doing. I don't know if this group looked at what these schools were doing. I know the schools were getting in the pandemic were helping students get devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but I don't know. But I don't know what's what is ongoing with that. And I know with you know, budgets always being under pressure, there's probably uh there may not be a lot to do. So I wonder for that one, um if there are because uh, that's our easiest way to reach the the younger people is yeah. is through the schools. <clears throat> so you're suggesting adding students to that? Well, I was going to put under potential funding sources, ah. but um, school-related grants, like mm -hmm. if there's something for helping uh, with, you know, equity for kids in schools, um, to have everybody have access to devices. Yeah. That 
they might expand where we can look. Or if we're partnering with the schools, they really like having partners with things. I also like maintain, promote, and improve free public Wi-Fi locations. Is our library currently a free Wi-Fi location? I believe so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So are there other uh, areas of town? Town Hall. Town Hall. Town Hall. Town Hall. Yeah. 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 And I think you get, they, they set it up so that you can you can get the Wi-Fi outside. Nice. Well, on a nice day. Yeah. yeah. That's great. That's good. That's great. Uh, on page, on the second page, goal two, selection of service. Yeah, definitely agree with negotiate lower internet subscri subscription rates. Yeah. Uh, right. There's a lot of tracking, advocating, and considering, and I'm looking for something that's like... Action. Action. Yeah. yeah. Impact now. Right. Well... The only alternatives that I know of would be a lot of work. It'd be like yeah. it'd be like a town hall overhaul, maybe even more. That's mm -hmm. what Leverett did, of course. And they hired somebody right. hired somebody to to do Make community fiber the whole town and they formed their own internet service provider. And um, mm -hmm. it cost a lot of money up front. And but they seem to have pretty good that service now and they did not in 1990 get the service of library. Is that how long it took though? Um, oh, I, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, I had small children during that time so yeah. I don't really yeah. remember yeah. what yeah. year yeah, yeah. it was, but I feel like it was in the, the 2000s still had two zeros in when that happened. I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I mean, that that's, that's like a really major initiative. And it would not be something I think you want to take on by ourselves because we do so much better in partnership. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With our partnering with our communities yeah. to be <clears throat> those regional ISP. Yeah. But the didn't Leverett essentially just join into the same program. That's how Happy operates. And I think yeah, Shootbury is part of they may have they're all the same provider. It's, it's yeah. So it's so there's all by shell. Right. The, the, yeah, they, they had to build out and start the operation themselves, but ongoing, they can have somebody else run it. Yeah. 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 And uh, I think that, uh, but but all the work was just yeah, getting yeah. started. And then I think, you know, there were town meeting votes. And, yeah. The investment, yeah, it, yeah. There's a, it's a big investment. And um, because Comcast was just not willing to do much of anything. Right. Does anybody have connections in Leverett or want to reach out? Or if not, I'm happy to reach out and just say, tell me about your process. Tell me about the costs. We're gathering information. Yeah, I think yeah. that would be yeah, that would be reasonable. Okay. I think I'm happy to do that unless somebody else says, me, me, me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not hearing anything, yeah. so it's me, me, me. Right. Yeah, and I, I like though that they put supporting partners where our our partner towns come yeah, out, yeah. Griffith, Sutherland, um, and uh, they even put down uh, somebody who successfully helped some communities do this. Um, as oh the um, it, this is under updates. Um, once we get the table committee negotiating committee going, that's something we can talk about uh, about whether our towns are interested. In doing something about it, and that might be the place to yeah. Yeah. to kind of gauge whether our partners, our partner towns, are really want to be partners. Mm -hmm. um, so we are are in the mood to do that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. So I think that it's. <laughs> And we'll definitely ask our attorney about how do we negotiate lower internet subscription rates. And I, I'm afraid I'll have to like help him get up off the floor from laughing so hard. Yeah, he's yeah. going to fall out of his chair. And, but, yeah. Yeah. All right. Goal three, digital resource navigation. Names of things do we see that we like on this page? Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
These are all yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the third one is uh, something that is often done at the senior center. Uh -huh. okay. uh, they, I'd say more than once a year. Um, I don't know if it'd be three or four times a year. Uh, we'll have somebody come to talk about what's the latest, what are the latest scans, not just that come on your computer, but to the phone through um, other means as well. Usually there'll be some um, police officer willing to come and you and talk about the latest, the latest know, thing. With regards to that specifically, does the senior center, when they're doing that kind of programming that's not targeted, specifically to an age group, but because it's the senior center, how do they do outreach to make uh, sure that they're getting yeah. wider? Uh, I don't know that they do outreach to the wider community necessarily. Oh, okay. They might, they may not do a lot. Okay. Um, so uh, that's- so, I mean, the senior population obviously is, is it's an element of that education, but I think everybody right. should get yeah. that. Yeah. I agree. And I'd like that they, um, one of these uh, was about coordination with the schools for internet safety education. Yeah, I like that. That there's Very kind much. of two, um, but I don't know what um, the library coordinating with the schools for internet safety. Education. I don't know exactly what that means. Like the the schools kind of have their hands full in a way, taking care of themselves, and I don't know like which way will the like if there's some money involved, is this helping who? Right. Um, yeah. You know, so yeah. So the library and our new uh, community development director. I'm going to give them a raise. A director uh, can get a USDA Community Connect grant. Uh -huh. Then yeah. maybe that's a, that would be uh, something that would be helpful. Like this, if the schools say, yeah, yeah, here's some uh, some money we can access that will help us with our education, and then we can also help each other. Mm -hmm. So I, I I like those two because it's sort of hitting the two groups. It doesn't necessarily have the people in between, but I'm going to make a note of, um, because I, the, the other thing the senior center has talked about and wants to do is um, start letting people who are younger know that they can be at the senior center, like 50 and over. Yeah, it's, like me, I just got a birthday party. You just, you just turned 50. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think when they have those kind of programs, they are um, open. The thing about, about giving out the devices that was in the con in the grant for seniors, um, mm -hmm. and so yeah, I think it had to be over sixty or something like that. But outreach for the education mm -hmm. uh, could. Well, I think that ties in with what's on the like the second and third things on the next page supporting digital literacy mm -hmm. that you can't really have digital safety without people knowing what they're doing yeah right. and so those are kind of uh, both it's there that says long-term support digital literacy long-term short-term medium-term short-term so it, i'm not sure how different those four lines are really well, one they're all kind of aiming. I think the direction. safety assumes a degree of literacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you can't teach someone safety if they don't really know what an app is or a website or what yeah. the program is. Yeah. yeah. And uh, on that page 24, the third one uh, about connecting high school students with aging populations to focus on digital literacy learning, we might actually be in a good position for that with all the work that seniors has been doing about getting devices to seniors uh, and then kind of the ongoing um, work of, you know, continued. Yeah, for the, it's hard to pull one of these out from the other. They all, yeah. They all yeah. come in together, yes. Library device lending program and modernizing on site devices is great too. We become at IT grant government. Yeah. I wonder how, um, like, if we had numbers, if the library had numbers of, I bet they do keep track. How, how often are the computers being used? Mm -hmm. And um, are there things that you can't do on those computers 
that people really want to do and, and need to do uh, there. So that ain't my dear. Well, I'm the library liaison. There you are. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I know our librarian is really good. And our she senior is, center director excellent. is good and they collect data and that's how you get grants. Yeah. It's having the data to back up. I can check in with, I can check in with Cindy. So this uh, seems like a lot of material that we won't necessarily vote on priorities tonight, unless yeah. you're misunderstanding our discussion. Probably not, if we need to go through it. Keep going through it. And maybe even, I don't know, compact some of it because they do kind of knit together. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap. There is a lot of overlap, yeah. yeah. I have a volunteer. Oh, this makes my eyes bleed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, but I, the Thank feedback you. is yeah. not a voting. Is this is something where you want feedback for the which grants we should prioritize? Building? Yeah. Well, what? What are the priority? What does the select board want to set as the priority? Because that can then guide the next CDA to uh, go for either those grants or create those connections with those other yeah. agencies. Uh, not to say that they want to do the other ones. It's just they'll set them as a priority of what things they should be working on. Okay. Uh, but if you want to continue to review and then we can take an actual vote on priorities at the next meeting, we can certainly do that. Okay. I would say yeah, that I, makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I don't, yeah. I don't see the urgency, especially since we're going to be looking for new CDA right. in any case. So this, this isn't mm -hmm. going to be utilized for a while. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Highway Department request to declare supplies and equipment as surplus. A bunch of, uh, uh, parts for a tractor, an entire dump truck, and a lot of galvanized perforated pipe. Uh, does One more. Keith, I mean, Keith, does uh, Keith. Keith, thank you. <laughs> does Keith show up to talk about this or? No, he would, he just submitted the, the lists. Yeah. Um, uh, whenever we have excess or, um, uh -huh. Equipment that we do not need any longer. The by the bylaw, the select board has to, based on the request from the department, determine and vote that yes, the items are surplus, and that then triggers a requirement that we then I would then notify all the departments of that surplus product. They could either claim it or un anything that becomes unclaimed, the department key can then list it on municipals to sell it off of all of the. No, okay. I, so I there's a few stages. Word that these things yeah. yeah, he has, um, as you can see, like there a lot of them are pipe pieces that they just don't have any long any use for. Yeah. Uh, one of them is an old tractor that at this point is only eligible really to reuse the parts. Uh, and then we just recently replaced the dump truck. So um, this most likely could be um, reused possibly by another department, but that's why we need to yeah. go through the stages to make sure that we internally yeah. utilize it or sell it out. That makes sense. Yeah. It looks like it would free up some space for them. Yes. Yeah. 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 Big pile. So, so I'm entertaining. I, I, I will move that we approve the list of surplus items as submitted from the highway department. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Personnel request post opening for community development administrator slash assistant town administrator to replace Sylvie. Yeah. So Sylvie's last uh, day will be September 18th. So feel free to stop by this, which are best of luck. Um, so obviously, this means that we have an opening or we we have a vacancy and we would like to do an opening. Um, so my request is to be able to list this position. Um, I do have a request though to slightly modify it. Um, uh -huh. 
The intention of the community development administrator was to support the land use boards, primarily the planning and CDA in their applications, provide some direction, not on site and not at meeting staff support, but to provide some uh, level of support or at least feedback on the applications that come in, actually review those applications, make sure that they're complete, keep them organized, make sure that they're scheduled appropriately following the timing requirements so that we don't have constructive grantee because an application fell through the, the cracks, uh, as well as handling a lot of the grant program for the community. So it's working with the departments, identifying what they need for projects, find grants that can help support them, see through those grants, both the acquisition, but the administering, and in most cases, uh, reimbursement of the grant monies. Uh, but there was also the added responsibility of the assistant town administrator. Uh, previously, under the previous uh, uh, employees that have filled it, that the ATA element was never really utilized. Um, yeah. uh, and my feeling is that we should be posting for our community development administrator and we should separate the ATA as a stipend position that could be applied to uh, a staff member that whoever, it, it may change, but it should never be tied to one particular job title. And then we're always trying to fill the job for dual purpose, uh, which can make it far more difficult to fill it or even both fill it, uh, fulfill the responsibility. So. My re request is to remove that ATA element and any references to it. Um, that may mean the board may direct me to go back to the personnel committee or we make that amendment here, but uh, I'm happy to go to the personnel committee with this recommendation. My request would be though, to keep the position funded at its current funding uh, without changing the funding simply because we're removing an item, uh, an element. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my request. My, I do intend on when I am authorized to post for it to do some heavy promoting of the position to planning groups, uh, especially to the UMass Regional Policy Program. I believe the, the original intention of this position is really great for a recent uh, mm -hmm. urban planning or regional planning student because that? they will know the theory and the concepts of legal requirements to planning, but also the need for grants, what the grant programs are out there. That is something that is part of those uh, program planning uh, graduate programs. So mm -hmm. I feel that we, and this is a perfect entry level for a recent grad or uh, somebody mm -hmm. out of school of mm -hmm. two years. So yeah. uh, I have a plan of attack. I just need to be able to uh, get yeah. it ready. Yeah. Yeah, when, when this was originally approved at town meeting, <clears throat> the ATA element was not in there. It was designed as uh, Definitely. community development and land use, but there was no. There was the ATA, ATA, just as a great ATA wasn't there at all. Okay. And I mean, <clears throat> I kind of remember at the time we thought um, that uh, if you called an assistant town administrator, more people would find it attractive. Regardless of the actual job, <laughs> and I, I mean, I could think about that, but uh, uh, I don't have any. Uh, if, if they're not really an assistant town administrator, and it sounds like you still need the kind of knowledge of laws and government to do, like support of the planning board, you still need a lot of the same yes. kinds of of education that someone who's been assistant town administrator. But you don't, do. an assistant town administrator doesn't need to know those land use things, whereas a community development person would. would. So that's, no. yeah. yeah. I would say that I, there is a need for an ATA uh -huh. um, explicitly for the fact that when I do go on vacation, uh -huh. there has to be somebody with the responsibility to fulfill in my uh -huh. stead or sure. if I'm sick, yeah. somebody to be able to be here at the meeting with, to support yeah. those <clears throat> for the FinCom. So, yeah. uh, there is that need. It's not as imperative as filling the CDA, I would say, for a, a town like this. I mean, it's not as pressing as yeah, I would agree. The yeah. grant and the supporting our land use boards. Joyce is a member of the personnel committee. Do you think yes. that the select board has the uh, authority to strike as assistant town administrator without going through the personnel committee? Oh, um, uh, you, you on, on your plate. Uh, and no, uh, I would say legally, 
we have the authority. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we do have the authority. We have to work there, with any like, person on committee. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 But they might, uh, they might appreciate the heads up, I uh -huh. suppose. Um, so, the only issue with that is yeah. delay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a delay. I'm happy to do a red line and send it to you, Joyce. Yeah. If you or, think that because of the red lines, it constitutes right. a need for the committee to meet. Then right. And the, and um, we could also run it by the chair of the personnel committee and just keep. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, if we run it by the chair and the chair thinks that, because um, I think it, it sounds like our consensus is you we know. really should. Yeah, that yeah. we're getting good advice from Pete, and that that is uh, uh, that yeah. we want to do that. And does he think it's necessary for the whole personnel committee to me to recommend that we do that? If or we already just go ahead, we yeah, but we should be polite about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, and, exactly. it's a matter of protocol. Yeah. And then yeah. Ask, yeah, and ask, we have the authority to do this. We have the authority. So. Yeah. Yeah, so you can get yeah. a red line and you can yep. run that by Keith as soon as right. possible. And we might get anticipate a vote then next meeting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Huh. That delays it for two weeks, though. Does that mean it can't be posted for two weeks? Two weeks. I, I, yeah, I can't. Post an opening unless the select board agrees that we need to fill an opening. Well, and can we, we need to agree on the job description. Right. Yeah. So, well, all right. Post so I'm, I'm doing a black line here. Is it possible? I don't even know if this is protocol to vote on something and say we would approve it with the amendment. As long as yeah. the personnel committee. Something that we've done previously. Yeah. You know what? Agrees and that way, I think that this will happen. Yeah, yeah, then we can get it out sooner. So I would entertain a motion to do that. Well, if we're not changing any of the position summary other than crossing out the word assistant town administrator from the title of the position, then I don't think we're changing it substantially. I don't think that the personnel committee will. Let's just go through um, eliminating assistant town administrator wherever it appears and how it was that impact. Well, and yeah, let me do because I think that might be the only place. Think that it's, only place. It's, in, it's in the position summary. Yeah. Right, exactly. That, that's the only, but that's oh, the title. The title yeah, they're just restating the title of the position there. Right. Okay, so the title appears there. The title appears there somewhere in there. Um, the, like any, any place where I see it so far, yeah. it's just, um, they're re well, the restating the, the title. Top of page two. Assistant Town Administrator, Finance Committee, and other financial officers with budget, capital planning, fiscal policy. But that they they can do that if even if they're not an assist assistant town administrator. You don't have to be an ATA to assist the town administrator. You can be you can be an administrative assistant and assist the town administrator. I, I think to yeah. Joyce's point, because you know what grants are off are out there, you can help with okay. that budgeting element. I think that's the way that we can hopefully do it. Yeah. And so far, I see three places where they repeat the position title. One, they're right there at the top. Two, under position summary. Three, under general duties. Um, and it's just changing the title. It's, really the title. it's not changing mm -hmm. any of the physical demands, the work environment, the tools, the necessary skills, desired minimal qualifications, none of the bullet points. Um, <clears throat> Say anything like, hey, go over for the town administrator. Next and time and that one with assistant town administrator only would trigger something if you knew that the town administrator had been in there. Right. So, um, yeah, it, yeah, it almost feels like this feel was like written, it, like the ATA was just added. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so we can subtract. We can, yeah, yeah I think we can. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, I would I say if we're not making any right. if we're not making any substantive changes beyond that, we're not really responsible changing the job right. description. Here. Yeah, it's just the verbiage. Yeah. So I would entertain a motion to approve this request with the uh, number one with the um, 
strikeouts that we've discussed and clearing it with the chair of the personnel committee. Um, second that. I didn't move. Oh, you didn't I move. Okay. okay. I, I would entertain that. Okay, you're entertaining I, the motion. He moved. You seconded. Nice. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Oh, you can move. Am I allowed to move? You can move. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great thing for you to let us do all the movies. Right? And it's second. allowed to no, move things. It's oh, sort of traditional. The chair doesn't make many motions. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So you can entertain. Can. Right. Well, no, I the, can the entertain. chair is entitled I can to show yeah. them along. So yeah. Sometimes, in particularly important things, the chair All will make right. a motion. So, All right. This, this is know. very important. We have a special town meeting, and I would entertain a motion to open the warrant for the prom 2024 session. I move that we open the warrant. I'll second that. And if I had a bell to ring, I'd ring it. Ding dong. All those in favor. Uh, aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, Let's open. Let's, we can read it. Let's discuss the yeah, we'll uh, readings. Okay, approve uh, number one. Approve bills of prior fiscal years. So this is yeah the invoice um, for the assessing software from last year. Uh, it came in late, but it was dated four hundred fifty. We can do it at this special town meeting. Otherwise, it could be postponed until the annual town meeting. That would be 450 from free cash. Article 2, rescind opioid settlement, special purpose stabilization fund, and approved transfer to free cash. So this is one where we essentially have to do a change. Um, I kind of discussed it last time where originally when we were um, going to receive the opioid or started to receive opioid settlement, we had set it up as a special purpose stabilization fund, which then makes actually utilizing expending funds very problematic because you have to keep coming back to the town meeting for that. The recommendation from the Commonwealth is to instead rescind that and create an opioid special reserve fund and transfer set monies into that reserve fund, thereby making it easier for actual uh, usage because you can use money out of the reserve fund so long as it's based on the stipulations of that requirement. Yeah. Um, and so it is a two-step process. Oh, okay. So it's yeah, two and three are yeah, two and three are yeah. together. So you first are going to rescind the original stabilization fund and transfer that money into free cash, and then in three you're going to now transfer free cash into a special reserve fund. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. And is the, the special reserve fund is already created? No. That, that doesn't take a vote to create. This this language has to go through KP still, so it probably needs to beef it up a little bit. I okay. just created the initial framework, which is actually based yeah. off of KP language of another town, but I'll yeah. have to make so sure that they in, still... e either into this article or another yeah. article to yeah. establish it. it. Possibly. Right. Yeah. I'm remembering there's almost not always two at one to establish a fund, yeah. one to put the money yeah. in. Yeah. And here we have one to get rid of Which you do have in the next one yeah. with the fire department, but that's because the fund that you're creating is a revolving fund uh -huh. and revolving funds fall under your general bylaws. So we have to have an article related to amending the general bylaw. Uh, first transfer the money out of that reserve revenue fund, then a bylaw, general bylaw amendment to establish the result revolving fund and then the funds from that previous fund is this new revolving fund. Okay. Hey. Um, I'm going to get like, there's going to be little cups on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another cup. Let me okay, let's create a cup. And again, all language is still up for review. One thing also, I put in a placeholder as far as the spending limit at $3,000. That is still up for discussion. They have $16,000. Um, you with revolving this funds. Is the fire department? Spend, yeah. yeah okay. With revolving funds, you always set a spent new spending limit every fiscal year. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just basing it off of the current spending limits of your other, other revolving funds. Uh, uh -huh. I don't know if uh, the fire chief has a greater need this fiscal year to utilize the funds that may be larger than three thousand. But um, this will will fine tune it as we find just the more on a technicality. Shouldn't the establishment of the revolving fund be come first because otherwise if we rescind fire department special account and we 
have rejected a revolving fund, then it's possible, yeah. the money. It's in cyberspace. The, the, it's yeah, no, yeah, it could be yeah, generally yeah, it's by the and, and then right. uh, and then I think uh, we have to where really it's going. Yeah. I mean, not that yeah. there's any real yeah. doubt that it will be established, but right. So just technically. I happen to notice that on Article 6, improving the transfer of free cash, it's the same exact number as the opioid settlement purpose. Oops, that was fund. just... That I is, think that's... That's Pete doing that. I think it's going to be 3,000. Yeah, so that yeah. might highlight the numbers Good because job. it's yeah, all right. something to be looked at. I'm, I'm so shocked shy. that I'm not yeah. done that. It just seemed like a spending number of 3,000 if you've got 16,000 in it, and then that I why do they have the same amount as you the other settlement? Hmm. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> article <laughs> seven. That's what that. We're still meeting. <laughs> Next one is um. Uh, a request for free cash uh, for, in the amount of $8,426 in order to provide for matching funds for the uh, town's update to the comprehensive plan. Uh, we've applied for a grant that will cover a majority of the costs. It does require that the town provide a match of 10% in financial uh, uh, match. And so, based on the total amount of that grant that's anticipated, we would need $8,462.26. Okay. Um, and then, let's see, then we have the CPA appropriations. These have been voted on by uh, the Community Preservation Committee. Um, and they are related to the center school. Uh, it's $8,000 towards the roof replacement and 14,000 towards the feasibility, the reuse feasibility. 82,000, 82, I was like 8,000. 82,000, sorry. A uh, total of 96, or a total of 96 and 38. Yeah. And we have been assured by Judy that they have that money. Yes. Available. Article 9, repurpose funds allocated under Chapter 253 of the Acts of 2020, transfer funds under Chapter 253 for, to the police department for other uses, such as the request to use for firearms purchases. So since the Acts of 2020, the town has been allocating about 15000 I believe it's $15,000 towards this um Towards this line education, item, yeah. it's specifically yeah for educational and training purposes. Um, however, the police department has not historically utilized all of those funds, and so the police chief has requested utilizing a portion of those funds for firearms purchases. Um, right now, the language needs to be put together by council. Council still has to even determine whether or not we can do this. Um, Why doesn't? That money just go back to the general fund, right? Mm -hmm. Or and then we, we don't we, allocate as much money every year, and right. instead we're doing something else, right? Yeah. No, the and that was supposed to be that money was supposed to be for three years, the fifteen thousand to get the officers we had up to the new training, and then it was going to be some other amount. So it is, it it's is supposed to get reduced. It was supposed yeah. to get reduced, okay. and I, I just don't think. That this is something that I mean, he thought he needed it. We appropriated it, and he doesn't need it for that purpose. Fine, just I don't know. Get back in line and ask for the things you need. Yeah, and let it go through the regular process. And as I said to Pete in our meeting prior to this, that it's antithetical to the purpose of Chapter Two Fifty Three to purchase firearms. Oh, now that I wasn't even aware of. Yeah. <laughs> to purchase well, because their original intention is funding educational, yeah. which is essentially to help yeah, anti yeah. encourage yeah, yeah. The community policing efforts. Yeah. yeah. So um, it, it, uh, I, I, I'm guessing I will not. I would not vote to recommend it from what I know right now. Well, and, and so. remember, too, the board 
can it's you, it's your prerogative to determine any articles that will or will not appear in the warrant. So mm -hmm. you right. can decide whether or not you want it in the warrant. It, it, does, it doesn't seem like that's the right process. It's not that we won't buy the firearms just not to do their job. Right. This is yeah, this right. is so a way it should to be a capital request. It should be a capital request and and we have funded them in the past, not necessarily every penny, but you know, no, nobody wants them to go out there with crappy well, equipment. What left field council has to say, yeah. we will revisit. Yeah. Yep. Please, sorry. I'm going to say that no matter what the council says, I would be against it. Well, I don't want to make that statement. We may find out it's not even a legitimate warrant article, so we don't have well, to alrighty. come to that decision. Well, we could just say no right now. In the paid council, right? That's the thing is, do you yeah. want a paid council to go and do you the just research? Say, nah, thanks, get back in line. Yeah. I assume council is going to be reviewing the all entire warrant. The yeah. entire warrant. Yeah. 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 Now, I'm fine with striking it. Yeah. I would entertain a motion to strike it at this point. Yeah. This is just a draft, so we just... yeah, yeah, yeah. To struck informally, not to consider it. Uh, Article 10 repurpose rebates for school projects. Okay, so Project this one singular. is um, the Frontier Regional has been doing mini split projects at all of the elementary schools, and those mini split projects are. They're eligible for rebates. For the IRA. Yeah. Anytime you have rebate money from any of your capital projects by finance, municipal finance rules, those monies have to go into your general funds. What uh, Darius has been doing in the other communities is they're saying, yes, we've received the rebates. We are immediately going to reallocate that from the general fund because it went into the general funds towards X project. So essentially doing a, a capital allocation out mm -hmm. of general funds based on earmarking mm -hmm. the rebate. The one complexity is the project for the mini splits that we are doing at Whaley Elementary are ARPA funded projects. They were not municipal funds. So we have to, Darren and I are trying to find out, can we mm -hmm. do this? Or what, what happens if it's ARPA funds those that then the result in a rebate. Yes. Where do those monies go? Can they go? Because Good. If, would or, they have to go back to our ARPA funds? Right, right, exactly. Because ARPA funds are supposed to be limited in the scope of what they can be used for. But if we get a rebate, we put it into our general funds. Now it could go to anything. So actually, well, the, the ARPA honestly, funds aren't are limited. They're, are, they're, 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 they're under they're 10 million, they removed all the restrictions. Oh, okay. On yeah. ARPA funds. Yeah. But this, the many such results was on the basis of. It's going to cost this much, but there's going to be a rebate. It wasn't necessarily that that rebate would immediately go back to the schools. It so what just, would you? It's just the, you know. It's did you have a discussion on what the anticipated use would be for no, the rebates? There, there okay. was no no discussion at all. But the the pitch was okay. It's you know sixty three thousand, but you're going to get twenty six thousand back. Yeah. But there was never the. Follow on, oh, uh, which we expect is just going to yeah. the schools. Right. I mean, the, the reality is the that, school department does have um, plans to finish the mini split project, which includes for the next fiscal year six more rooms. And so, does the town want to do a capital request for all six, or do you want to allocate this money to pay for two rooms? Thereby, meaning that when the capital request comes for the next annual, I mean, we, we, we just we can certainly. Look to apply this to the as yet not approved <laughs> mini splits right. next year, which will also have to rebate. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I'll just get cake. Right. But yes. I'm, I'm just saying that yeah, it may be able to go to school, but it was not assumed that this was school money and they get to use the rebate. Yeah. Hmm. And that's why they're making the request, not right. that because there's right. an assumption. It's just he's been. He's been trying to stretch the money on the mini split projects at the various buildings by reusing the rebate monies back into the next phase of those projects. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it could be that that money being fungible could be that that money goes to that project. Yeah. Assuming it gets approved at next year's town meeting. 
but as of now, it has not yet been approved. My only concern is if the rebate monies ARPA funded projects that result in rebate money mean the money go back into the ARPA, uh, mm -hmm. then that means you now have to do an obligation and we have to make sure the obligation and contract happens before the end of this calendar yeah. year. So, yeah, um, you, you may have to check the federal yeah. regs in this cycle. Believe that it does that it goes back to the general fund. Okay, does not necessarily. And that's where we are double checking right. on that. But I yeah. just wanted to point that out that right. of the four towns, mm -hmm. we used ARPA funds, where the others did capital improvements. So they were it was a little more clean mm -hmm. as to the process they were doing. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. the yeah. only. That's right. the last one on here. There is one additional one. Um, Fred and I have discussed that. <laughs> It is in relation to the item that we're going to have an appeal hearing on Thursday night. Um, as you know, we have been sheltering a dog uh, for almost three months, no, three months now, three months at a significant cost to the community. Uh, based on our uh, revolving, we have a dog license and shelter revolving fund that allows us to receive funds from licensing fees and there or pay sheltering fees if we ever need to. We never intended to do such a long-term sheltering and we have a limitation on that revolving fund of only spending $2,000 a year or in this current fiscal year. We are nearly maxed out and it's only September because of this one item. Uh, based on the discussion, we're likely going to need to include a warrant article in here to do a free cash transfer where we utilize free cash specifically for that particular sheltering cost and other costs that may be associated to that animal so that we aren't impacting the revolving fund or that limitation on the revolving fund. Uh, I will have final dollar amounts for you or an estimated dollar amount right now. It has, as of the end of July, it's cost us um, almost $2,000 uh, just the end of July. We still don't have the August bill, and then we can easily calculate based on what the dog day rate is, what the September impact will be. So you're saying the $2,000 is just July? June is it's July. June, July. June is July. Yep, it did include at least two. So, but still, uh, so there will be a, a chunk of free cash that will be requested, or that we should request, because at this point, we are putting that fund into uh, a difficult spot because we are likely creating a cost that we can based yeah. on the limitation we can't meet it. And Pete yeah. communicated with me earlier today that the town has an option of asking the job's owner. We don't. So we, we don't. Oh, I thought you said we okay. don't. So yeah. I, I thought there was, and then I checked with Matt. There's a nuance in the law. Okay. Uh, there is a reimbursement element. The yeah. reimbursement element is only triggered when the board makes the original order. Last year. Last year. If that is appealed, if, if there is an order and a euthanization included in that order and that is appealed, if the district court upholds that original order and euthanization, then reimbursement for all sheltering and euthanization can be required but it's only based on the original okay. order. Okay. And it has to be an appeal because what we're doing Thursday night is an appeal of the seizure and there is no appeal process after that. Yeah. It won't allow for it this other work. process. Okay. It's unfortunately, so it does uh, fall onto the responsibility of the town. Okay. I, well. thought there, I thought there was a, but yeah, there is a, a nuance there. <laughs> Even if it were, it would be a long time before. Yes, yeah, we, we ever saw anything like that. Uh, right. Are we done with the town warrant? We should review. Yeah, for darn near the end. Oh, well, I guess there's a question, though, to the board members. Are you aware of any other articles <laughs> that may need to be added for special? Not as of now. Okay. And I, after I notified all the departments of the 
the meeting or the special town meeting date, I was not made aware other than Darius's request. But otherwise, there's been no other uh, notes about things that. So next meeting, we will be finalizing and closing the warrant. Is that so? So next meeting, you will review the articles. Hopefully, we'll have a tighter language. Mm -hmm. You'll also be able to take your votes on whether you want to recommend each mm -hmm. article. And if you feel at that time you're ready to close the warrant, we can do that on the 24th. Otherwise, we can meet on the following Tuesday outside of your cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, October first, just to close the warrant. Should there be some reason that we need to like finalize anything, okay. but we do need to close it by October first, just so that I have time to finalize, get it printed, and post it. Um, okay. But we do have that. We do have a, a grace period if you don't, if you're not ready to close on the twenty fourth. Okay. Great. Uh, number seven: Select board liaison updates. I have no updates at present. Uh, Highway Department will we have taken care of that with the yeah. new employee. Uh, I want to set up a meeting with the fire chief. Just have a general discussion of future fire departments. So apparently, a bunch of OSHA regulations coming down the line, which would require things like more frequent upgrading of equipment and the like, which would be very expensive to abide with. And not just weekly, but all Everybody's the, the regulations, I think, are subject for final approval in November. There's going to be another set of public hearings in Washington. But this would be just another thing that would make the fire department in the small town having the fire department much more expensive. Mm -hmm. So I want to sit down with Pete, JT, and try to figure out where, what is the future yeah. of firefighting for late? Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I've got, uh, I've not had a meeting with the South Bend Senior Center or any of the other boards. I did get a notification that the, uh, the schools will the Union 38 negotiating team is going to have to start meeting because we're getting to the end of that cycle. I've been liaison to the schools, so I've been doing on the negotiator team. So that's kind of on the horizon, but there's the they proposed a date that nobody could make and that got canceled. So <laughs> uh, it's just it's on the horizon, I guess is all I would say. All right, thank you. Town administrator updates. The assistant assessors is, have changed for the season. Um, they're now eight to noon on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which is great because now it's two day options as opposed to just Thursday. Um, so the assessor's office or the assistant assessor is available on the mornings of Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, the culverts on River Road will be replaced, which is going to require closing a portion of River Road between Christian Lane and Sugarloaf Street Extension. It'll be limited to local traffic buses, emergency vehicles. That's going to happen on Monday, September 16th, with a rain date of Tuesday the 17th. Message boards are going to be put up ahead of time on either ends in order to make sure motorists are aware of that uh, future closure. Um, and related, um, Christian Lane was also closed today for a yeah. portion of the day. So today was a nightmare trying to yeah. get the transfer station. Oh, right. and, and unfortunately, we were given information that the closure was going to be from two to four ish. Yes. And unfortunately, yeah, I, they I started get much across earlier. Yeah. <laughs> that, super early. That yeah. I so had to go up to one all the way around. The, yeah. the, the, the pavement is lovely between Christian Lane and the diner at this point. It's been <laughs> oh, that was good. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, yeah. it that way myself. Oh, yes. Thinking that, uh, oh, I don't necessarily want to go. I don't want to do a lot of traffic, but I think that's, that's nice. Nice. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. But I think we have to work tomorrow <laughs> you know, from, I don't, I don't know how far south they got today, but the south end of, yeah. Route five in the town is going to be a nightmare tomorrow. Okay. I already told Pete, but he uh, put something on the website. It's very uh, visible. Um, uh, it's an emergency alert, which I don't think we were doing before, but it 
right there. It pops right up and gives you a lot of information, which we're going to be doing going forward. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can't miss it when you log the website. So. Yeah. 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 Back at the phone. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No phone. Yeah. 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 Even if the state gives bad information. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. As far as job openings are concerned, we currently have the animal inspector position posted. I'm actually going to start the review with the police chief and a representative of the Board of Health, Michael Archibald, tomorrow. We have five applicants. We're going to look through those applicants to see which ones we're going to interview. Hopefully, if everything goes well, I'll be coming to the next board meeting with a recommendation for that appointment. Um, and then from the water department, there was a water break that occurred overnight. Uh, so we report to the 5th, the water department closed out a portion of River Road. The morning of the 5th, they had those repairs completed with the road open by noon that same day. So uh, one other item. Park. What's that? Bravo. Thank you. Good job, water department. Yeah. One other item that's not on here, it just came in this afternoon, is there is an independent filmmaker that's looking to do some filming in town, specifically at Kuwaitly Diner. Uh, myself and the police chief are going to meet with them Friday to understand the scope. It is going to be significantly smaller scope than at the previous filming that was done at the diner. Most likely will just be on property, will not impact the roadway, it will not require any type of traffic but we're going to get the details i am going to ask them that they come to the select board most likely on your 24th if not back then the october 8th just to give the board the opportunity to hear what they're planning to do and you can ask any questions as well um, but it shouldn't require any permits or any uh restrictions because it's seems like it's going to be very limited both in time but also just on the property itself uh -huh. All right, but if we get a chance to rent the Demaya space. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Any items not anticipated? We'll post it. No. Next we meeting. Adjourn. Next meeting, September twenty fourth. And I have a motion to adjourn. Second. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.